Welcome to Max ECU Training Part 46. This video we're going to be taking a look at using a rolling anti-lag functionality and programming within our MTune software. A rolling anti-lag feature is going to allow a turbocharged engine in a roll race type situation to be able to boost instantly when we are applying the rolling anti-lag feature. As soon as we let go of the button that's going to control the rolling anti-lag, we're going to have boost instantly and we're going to have a slingshot effect and we're going to get the advantage on the person that we're racing. We're going to have a lot to cover in this training tutorial. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with a rolling anti-lag functionality and programming within our Max ECU. A rolling anti-lag is used on a turbocharged engine when we want to do a roll race or when we're not stationary, but we're actually driving the vehicle 20, 30, 40, 50 miles per hour, and we want to be able to have the jump on someone that we're racing against if you have a laggy turbocharger or if your turbo is spooled pretty reasonable, but you want to have an instantaneous power on demand as soon as you release the button, that's going to activate your rolling anti-lag. It's actually really simple to set up and program, as I'm going to demonstrate here in this video, and extremely effective. So let's jump in here and take a look at how we're going to set up our roll race, uh, rolling anti-lag type feature. This is going to be something, that, again, only turbocharged engines can use. If you're naturally aspirated and supercharged, this is not going to apply to you. All right, first thing we need to do is actually set up a momentary button that's going to be mounted on the steering wheel or on your shifter or somewhere on the car that you can access very easily. That button is going to be a momentary, so you're going to push it when you want to activate the rolling anti-lag. And when you let it go, it'll shut it off. It's going to be very important that we had set up in this configuration. You do not want to have an on or off type toggle switch or a latching type of switch. The button needs to be purely momentary, so when it's pressed, it activates, and when you let off the button, it'll deactivate. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at how to set this up. Now, I've wired my particular button into my digital input 2 on my Max ECU. So I'm going to go up here into my start and move down my navigation menu here into inputs. I'm going to go into inputs and then move down here into digital inputs. In my digital inputs, I have it set here to digital input 2. Let's click on this. Now we're going to find on the functionality here, we need to go and use our drop down menu and we're going to type in R for rolling anti-lag or rolling launch controls are calling it here. And we're going to find it's going to be appearing right here. So we need to go and set this switch up to make sure it's going to work. If I click this on here, we need to go and program some of our details. Now on the latch conditions, the button I'm using is a momentary button. I don't want it to latch on or latch off. I simply want it to work when I push the button, it activates the rolling anti-lag. When I let go of the button, it'll completely turn off the rolling anti-lag feature. So we want to set it to our option here as none. We do have other options in our drop down menu. None of those will be relevant for this particular situation. In the description here, we can call this our rolling anti-lag or give it some kind of a name so you know what the switch is going to be. I'll call this rolling, Let's see how many characters let me put in there, rolling anti. That's about all I'm going to fit for characters. Now the active level in my case, I have my momentary button wired into my Mac. So one leg of my momentary button is going to go to a chassis ground. The other leg is coming back in and it's going to be grounding my pin digital input to here that I've wired into. So in this case, my active level here is going to be active level falling edge. If we find here down below pull up resistor, it's set to five volt pull up. In when, when we're using a ground activated input to our max, we need to make sure our conditions are set as we're seeing right here. You can wire in a 12 volt type of input to a digital input here. And we need to go set in that condition a rising edge signal. So it's going to be a 12 volt signal. And we would not need a 5 volt pull up. We would have no pull up resistor uh, enabled here. So it's going to be the difference between dealing with a 12 volt signal into our digital input or a ground signal. In this case, I grounded it. I just find it's easier to grab a chassis ground for my button than looking for a 12 volt in the vehicle. All right, so the next thing we're finding here under input type, we need to go and set this under digital input. We do have an option here, VR input. That's not going to be applicable here for a basic momentary button that's on or off type functionality. So now we've set up our switch, and now the Max is going to know that when we press our momentary button, that it's going to be activating what the rolling anti-lag is going to do. Now we need to program those details in, the, in order to understand what is going on with it and making sure that it's going to work properly. What we want to do here is just to test our button out to make sure that the programming here is going to be valid. If we jump down here into our real-time values, we move down here under digital inputs, we're going to find that we have our digital to active rolling anti-lag is the functionality that we programmed right here in our naming of this input. We're going to find right now that this is going to be set at zero. If we see a status of zero, that means 
that that momentary button is not being depressed. So in this case, I'm not pushing the button in my vehicle. If I go and push the button right now. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.